Welcome to Zambition, the channel on which we engage in dialogue with leaders from across sectors and generations. For Zambition, the term leader does not only refer to those in high-ranking positions. It includes everyone who is seeking to make a difference in society. Greetings and welcome to Zambition. My name is Martin Kalungubanda, your host on this channel. Our guest today is Father Cleopas Lungu. He studied theology and philosophy in the seminaries of St. Augustine in Kabwe and St. Dominic's in Lusaka. Thereafter, he went to do biblical studies in Ireland. Upon his return, he worked in various roles in his home diocese of Chipata. Currently, Father Lungu is the Secretary General of the Zambia Conference of Catholic Bishops and lives in Lusaka. Father Lungu, welcome to Zambition. Thank you very much, uh, Martin. I'm so delighted and humbled to be uh, in this interview. I would like to begin my dialogue with you by inviting you to share an image or object that best describes the journey you have walked until now. I am in love with uh, trees. And uh, for me, trees are um, an image uh, that depicts um, what I am and what I try to do in life. I know that uh, a tree has several parts, but one of it are the roots uh, that uh, keep it grounded uh, into the earth. And um, they play a very critical role, uh, even though more often than not, we do not see the, the roots of a tree. Uh, and um, I often see myself as um, grounded into the Zambian soil, grounded in my culture, uh, grounded in my country. And um, I often work in the background, um, uh, helping people, helping the church, uh, but um, uh, my works are not always seen and uh, that is fine. Uh, but it is also uh, the part of the trunk that keeps the branches and then from the branches, you have um, the leaves and the fruits. And therefore, um, I believe that um, uh, every tree is um, useful, is uh, beneficial to the community. And I would like to believe that uh, my life uh, has been beneficial uh, in one way or another to the country and to the church, as well as to the communities in which I've lived. And what are some of those fruits, Father? I would like to believe that um, um, by and large I've been uh, teaching. Uh, I taught for several uh, years in the minor seminary uh, where I eventually became a rector uh, at St. Mary's uh, Junior Sec Second, uh, Secondary School or minor seminary. And um, uh, every so often I meet <laughs> uh, my former students. Uh, some have become engineers, some have become doctors, Others are teaching, like I was teaching them. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I see them, I, I smile uh, because I know uh, I've contributed to their career path and to the country. But um, uh, for about 10, 11 years now, I've been teaching in the major seminary and I have so many priests who are working in the different uh, dioceses of Zambia who uh, look at me and say, yes, our lecturer, our professor. And um, again, I smile and um, uh, without uh, sounding, you know, pompous or uh, proud, I would humbly say 
uh, that uh, the Lord has blessed me uh, to be at the service, uh, service of the church, but also of the country. Thank you, Father. What would you say are the two most defining moments in your life? I know there are many, but kindly pick top two. Well, um, the first one I would be I would pick is um, the time I passed grade seven uh, and went into grade eight at Chama Secondary School. I was coming from uh, Chasa Parish um, or Sinda District in particular, and it was a long way to uh, Chama, uh, but it was um, a leap in my life, uh, a transition uh, in my life from. Um, being at home with my family, uh, and um, you are thrown into a boarding life, as it were. And um, the boarding life, as it uh, came to be, was um, a moment of opening my horizon, extending uh, my wide world view. Uh, I um, came into contact with a different culture from the Senga Chewa culture I was used to to a Tumbuka Senga uh, culture and uh, a moment of growth, uh, certainly. Uh, but secondly, I would uh, think of my ordination to priesthood in 1998. And uh, we are seven of us. And uh, on the material day of uh, our priestly ordination, uh, the entire uh, diocese uh, congregated in one place called um, Bangwe Prayer Center. And uh, it was quite a moving uh, moment to see so many priests, so many uh, religious sisters and brothers, so many lay people, and even people who had traveled from other dioceses, and others even came from the United States, from uh, the UK, uh, friends and relatives, to come and give uh, me the uh, spiritual and uh, moral support. Um, and. Uh, to just uh, be part of that um, uh, inspiring, you know, uh, liturgical celebration, uh, the singing of the litany of saints, and you are reminded, you know, I'm not alone. I have people out there who have gone before us, who are in the presence of God and interceding for me and for my friends and for the church uh, on earth. It was quite something. And then, uh, to see so many witnesses uh, present, uh, and all of them have eyes on you, uh, you, you think twice before uh, misbehaving. Father, as you describe that moment of your ordination, you remind me of the experience I used to get uh, when I was a little choir boy in the northern province of Zambia. Ordinations were the biggest event anyone could witness. Yes. And as you were describing that moment of singing the litany of saints, I had goose pimples on my skin because I remembered how special that was. There are some rituals, and as you have put it, that remind us of why we have chosen certain paths in life. Exactly. Father, I would like to ask the question around us as a country declaring ourselves as a Christian nation. Permit me to quote something that you know better than I do. John chapter 17 verses 20 to 22. I'm not asking on behalf of them alone, but also on behalf of those who believe in me through their message that all of them may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. I give them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one, as we are one. Father Lungu, to what extent are we living as a Christian nation this invitation from Christ. 
Uh, firstly, uh, I would like to underline the fact that uh, the uh, scriptural passage you have read uh, speaks uh, and underlines the value of unity, uh, unity among people, unity among Christians, uh, that uh, in Christ we are one and we should remain uh, united. And um, uh, that resonates very well with our national motto of One Zambia, One a nation and uh, one nation, one people, uh, even though we are of uh, different and various uh, tribes and uh, languages. Um, on the other hand, uh, Zambia was declared a Christian nation, perhaps in a bid to um, confirm uh, the fact that um, many Zambians are ascribed to the Christian faith. Uh, so uh, over 90% certainly uh, are Christians. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you want also to uh, be alive to the fact that uh, this is an aspiration. <laughs> it's not uh, a statement of fact, uh, but an aspiration, uh, a dream, yeah, if you like. And that's why when uh, the declaration was made, uh, the Catholic bishops in Zambia uh, issued a pastoral letter uh, which underlined the fact that uh, a nation is not Christian by uh, declaration. Uh, in addition to the declaration, what is more important is to see its people uh, translating their Christian faith into actions. In other words, uh, they must live by the uh, Christian ideals, Christian values, Christian uh, principles, as it were. Uh, talk of unity. Uh, yes. Um, Jesus Christ prays for the church to be one. Uh, and I, I believe he prays and wishes that uh, in Zambia we remain united as a nation. Uh, but uh, time and again, we see uh, some uh, unchristian uh, elements, you know, popping up, issues of um, tribalism, issues of political divisions, issues of regionalism or nepotism. The Bible is very categorical. It's not those who say, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen, who shall enter the kingdom of God, um, but those who do God's will. And so at the end of the day, we would say, yes, by name we are, but in action, we can do better. We must show in action that we are a Christian nation. Father Lungu, we will take a little break and when we return i will ask you the question what is your ambition <laughs> country's potential in science and technology is to embrace mathematics and that's why the Center for Mathematics Excellence has been created to enhance mathematics in the country. At the Center of Mathematics Excellence we demystify mathematics. For example, I'll show you how to simplify a simple equation like this one. x plus 6 is equal to 10 we simply subtract 6 from both sides to obtain x plus 6 minus 6 is equal to 10 minus 6 and x is equal to 4. That's how we simplify such equations. Welcome back. Our guest today is Father Cleopas Lungu, Secretary General of the Zambia Conference of Catholic Bishops. But I'm interviewing him, I'm in dialogue with him as a Zambian and as a Christian. Father Lungu, what is your ambition? What is your highest aspiration for our country? I dream of a, a better Zambia, a Zambia that is uh, truly and genuinely uh, united, uh, reconciled and uh, living in peace and uh, harmony. 
uh, a Zambia in which um, its citizens actively and uh, intelligently uh, participate in the governance of the country. Uh, in other words, they do not just uh, elect people and uh, draw back, uh, but they hold them accountable. I a dream of a Zambia that is uh, truly democratic, uh, but also a Zambia that is um, thriving uh, socially, culturally, um, economically, and politically. Uh, so a Zambia uh, that is prosperous and, um, and uh, benefiting all Zambians without any discrimination of whatsoever kind. What will it take, Father, to somehow begin to get near to the ambition you have described? To a larger extent, I think, uh, firstly, to um, take uh, a good leadership. Uh, it's a matter of um, having leadership that are uh, servants of the people. Uh, so we are talking of servant leadership. Um, secondly, I would like to um, underline that we also need to have um, strong institutions of governance. Um, and I mean institutions that are well equipped, that are well staffed with competent uh, people. And uh, leaders must ensure that um, they place people where they can best perform mm -hmm. and give them the tools to perform, but also allow them or give them the freedom uh, to operate in a professional way. Uh, so if uh, one is appointed um, to be a minister, uh, give that person uh, enough leverage to operate and uh, to advise you as the head of state and uh, to speak even uh, what you don't want to hear. Um, at the end of the day, we also want to see strong institutions in terms of uh, the separation of powers. So uh, the executive doing its, its job, but also we want a vibrant uh, legislature and uh, a legislature that does not uh, take the role of uh, the executive, as we have often seen in Zambia, whereby MPs, when they are campaigning, instead of saying we are going to draw up laws and policies that will ensure that Zambia develops and uh, prospers, they often talk, I'll bring you schools, I'll bring you, <laughs> as if the role of an MP uh, is uh, fundamentally to bring uh, bridges, to bring schools and hospitals. And yet it is the role of the executive. But we also want um, a, a vibrant um, and effective uh, judiciary, uh, a judiciary that uh, people can have confidence in, uh, a, a judiciary that uh, will ensure that uh, justice is uh, administered uh, where it is deemed fit and uh, justice is not delayed. We want to see a Zambia where um, the Anti-Corruption Commission is effective, is working efficiently, uh, the drug enforcement, the Zambia police, and all other you know, institutions of governance are truly, truly uh, effective in their work. And thirdly, uh, we want Zambians who are morally right. Uh, it will take not only leadership, not only having institutions, uh, but also having citizens who are responsible, uh, citizens of virtue, uh, citizens who are uh, responsible, uh, who are morally upright, uh, citizens who um, uh, um, working for the good of the country, uh, citizens who want to contribute uh, to uh, the progress and the development uh, of their country. Awesome, Father. And uh, especially to underline some of the issues you have said, institutions that are strong enough to do the job they were created for. But you also talk about servant leadership. Some time back, one of my teachers said, when one is a servant leader, they wake up every day and ask the question, how may I serve you? Not, how may you serve me? If only we can adhere to those words. 
Exactly. Father, I would like to now invite you to look at the question of we need other institutions such as the church to continue playing the role that we have seen them play in the past. The church in Zambia has always raised, before and after independence, a prophetic voice, particularly a voice that reminds political leaders, business leaders, maybe even traditional leaders, to ensure that they don't abandon their call to service, service in support of the poor and the downtrodden. Has the prophetic voice of the church been silenced, Father? Would you be able to notice if that prophetic voice was to be corrupted by the trappings of power and material well-being? Well, um, I must uh, confess that um, I'm privileged to be uh, in this office of um, uh, the Secretary General of the Zambia Conference of Catholic Bishops. And um, I have um, a slight idea of what is um, taking place within the church as well as outside. Uh, but um, I can stand, you know, um, straight uh, and walk uh, with uh, my shoulders high because consistently the church um, has uh, rendered to this nation that needed prophetic voice, the voice of reason, uh, the moral voice that gives guidance to the country and guidance to uh, governments of the day. Um, they have, the church has done that in the unique area, uh, the era of the movement for Mount Party uh, democracy, and now the era of the patriotic uh, front government. Um, just um, as um, uh, late as um, uh, beginning of uh, last week, the three church mother bodies issued a pastoral letter uh, or pastoral statement that gives guidance to the nation in, in view of uh, the forthcoming elections. And they uh, indicated the importance of peace and maintaining peace the importance of um, the Zambia police being unbiased and uh, maintaining law and order, but doing it in a fair and um, uh, professional way. Uh, the importance of the church not to be corrupted by the trappings of power and uh, even of money. And uh, the guidance that was given in that statement, if uh, ever you came across it, is that um, uh, as clergy, let us be careful with donations that are being uh, given by politicians mm -hmm. from different sides of um, uh, the political uh, divide in the country. Uh, donations from the ruling party, donations from the, the opposition. The church must remain a non-partisan because it wants to be uh, objective, it wants to be uh, prophetic, but also uh, emphasizing the importance of the Electoral Commission of Zambia, ensuring that we are going to have free, fair, uh, peaceful, and um, credible elections at the end of the day. Um, so is the church facing challenges? Yes, it is facing challenges, um, especially when uh, you talk of the environment in which it is operating. We are talking of um, a polarized kind of uh, environment whereby, you know, even if the church means well, when it speaks, oftentimes our, our statements will be tweaked, will be put in a way that uh, suits the editorial agenda or policy of one media house or another. Again, we are talking of a situation where the media is polarized and therefore uh, when you are reading from one tabloid to another, you sometimes wonder whether you are living in the same country. Uh, but yet, this is the context. At the end of the day, uh, we know that the challenge is still there. And that's why uh, it is important for the church to remain vigilant. And it is important for the church to continue to pray and uh, to... Um, be alive to the fact of uh, the danger, the risk that is uh, 
uh, there and real uh, of being uh, silenced. Uh, thank God, uh, up to now, uh, we have um, kind of survived the challenges and we are still uh, swimming above the waters, as it were. Father, you talk about pluralization of our country. It is a sad picture to see a country that has been for years known for its peace as a beacon of hope, not only in Southern Africa, but across the continent. And polarization can lead to sleepwalking into the territories that none of us, no one of us among the citizens of Zambia would want to imagine. Polarization can make us walk in a way that we are still sleeping into physical conflict. It can lead us into civil war. It can lead us into destruction of our communities, economy, and society in general. Father, how can we heal this polarization? Well, uh, there are several things uh, one would say. Um, I believe that uh, at the end of the day, um, we each one must begin with himself or herself. And so speaking from the viewpoint of the church, uh, the church has committed itself uh, to work in promotion of uh, unity, uh, of harmony in the country. And um, uh, that's why you have been hearing of national dialogue uh, that the church has been champion for, championing for. And um, we have always maintained and uh, indicated that the church is available, uh, is willing uh, to lead and uh, to facilitate uh, people from different uh, sectors of Zambian life uh, to come around the table and talk and discuss and um, uh, engage in a manner that is aimed at uh, reaching national consensus and um, uh, perhaps finding solutions to uh, the challenges that we're facing, challenges of nepotism, challenges of um, uh, tribalism, challenges whereby to get a job sometimes uh, you need to have a certain surname <laughs> and sometimes it is not your qualification, your competences that will speak uh, in order to get a job. And that is um, what we are talking about. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, we believe that um, it is in, indeed important uh, for government to do uh, their part. And that is to uh, desist from politicians. Uh, and sometimes we see this even uh, from leaders in government uh, talking tribal, <laughs> talking uh, of regions. Uh, when you are in the office and you are a national leader, you must speak in a language that accommodates, that embraces everyone, uh, that speaks of uh, one Zambia, one nation. And so politicians have uh, a big role to play as well. Um, and finally, the church will say, if you want peace, work for justice. Yeah. If you want peace, work for justice. If in Zambia, justice, and I'm not just talking of justice in court, I'm talking of justice in politics, justice in our traditional uh, customs and traditions, justice in our economics, uh, taking care of the poor, taking care of the minority uh, groups. There, there are tribes that are big. <laughs> there are tribes that are small. We must take care of the needs of everyone. Uh, so we are talking of social justice. If you want peace, unity, and harmony, work for social, social justice. If we have social justice, we are going to have uh, a Zambia we have been and the Zambia we dream of, a united, reconciled, and peaceful and harmonious uh, nation. If you want justice, if you want peace, you said, if you want peace, work for justice. My final question, Father, is 
what is the best piece of advice you have ever been given? Um, the best piece of advice was um, uh, an advice uh, that I got from my parents telling me not to say anything but to do something. And, um, you know, during the season of um, fresh maize, mm -hmm. um, my mother would um, call us the children, uh, so I would gather around her um, and the maize is cooked and uh, she would give me a cob of maize and say, uh, can you share it with your, your brother or your sister? Um, so I'll do it. You share. Even if there was enough maize for each one to have a cob, but she would insist, mm -hmm. share with your brother. In other words, we must be in a, a, a loving people. We must be able to share with others what we have been gifted of, mm -hmm. and uh, we must think of others, not just of, of ourselves. Mm -hmm. A philosopher, uh, Descartes, used to say, cogito ego sum, mm -hmm. I think, therefore I am. Mm -hmm. uh, but in Africa, that's not how we think. Uh, we think of the community. Yeah. I am because we are. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a, a Ubuntu kind of philosophy. We, we, we think of community. We think of others. And in the... Um, uh, Christian way, we say, caritas ego sum. I love, therefore I am. Unless as Zambians we come together, we unite and we think of others, we are not going to move this country forward. We are going to kill it. But insofar as we live in love, in fraternity, uh, and in in, in, in union, in unity with others, we are going to um, uh, raise the standards of our country to uh, higher standards. Father Lungu, thank you very much for sharing your insights and wisdom. My wish is that the church continues to play its prophetic voice. We need that voice in moments of challenge such as we are currently facing. And may God bless your work. Thank you very much. And uh, may also uh, God uh, bless your work as you continue to um, engage the Zambian people through your YouTube channel. And um, I wish you God's blessing and God's uh, guidance in your endeavors. Thank you very much, Father. Having listened to the dialogue and followed my conversation with our guest, I now invite you to look at the drawing that emerged out of that dialogue. Take time to see the contours, the colors, the images that are reflected on the painting, on the drawing. And Pay attention to what the drawing evokes in you. What are the feelings? What are the thoughts that are ignited by you looking at the painting? What thoughts does the painting generate in you with regard to your own leadership? What thoughts, feelings, and images does this painting evoke in you with regard to the future of our country? What else does this painting make you think and feel? Kindly share your reflections on this channel so that we can continue the dialogue on the future of the country we all love, on the future of our nation. Thank you.